If you're anything like me, the first thing you do when you look at Amazon, Newegg, or even Yelp reviews is you sort by worst first and read all the bad shit that people have had to say about the product you're looking to buy. With that in mind, I felt there was a need for hardware reviews fashioned in the same vein. Don't expect my reviews to be cushy product rundowns featuring B-roll and benchmarks you've seen a hundred times before. No tech ticklers, I am here to talk shit and chew bubblegum, and I'm all out of bubblegum. And I have a GTX 1080 Strix Edition in my computer that I'll be reviewing. <laughs> <laughs> First, let's get the basics out of the way. This is a GTX 1080 on a custom PCB shared between all three SKUs on the 1080 Strix lineup. The only difference between the three appears to be the stock clocks, but from what I can tell on the internet, all three versions will overclock just as high. There seems to be no binning difference between them, but I could be wrong since nobody's scientifically and empirically tested them. Mine overclocked to 2100 megahertz, but I've dialed it down because of all the fucking noise this thing makes. Now to be fair, it's not quite as noisy as the ACX and ACX 2.0 cards I've gotten my hands on over the past few years from EVGA, but it's still pretty noisy for a near thousand dollar graphics card, and no card, as far as I'm concerned, should be at 45% fan speed and be this audible. Now I happen to be in possession of not only this GTX 780 Ti from Asus, but I also have a Strix Edition 970 on my test bench right now ready to go. And what we're gonna do is take this microphone, put it six inches away from all three cards at the same fan speed percentage and see how they sound. Let's have a listen. Okay, now I know that's not the most accurate of testing methodology I could have possibly applied, and yes, I could have taken the 1080 out of my system and put it on the test bench for a more accurate reading, but the bottom line is, it didn't fucking matter, because the first fucking piece of footage was still louder than the second and the third, despite the fact that A, my main rig was actually running right behind the microphone during testing in stages two and three, and secondly, as you could clearly hear, there was a bit of hum from the 970 and a bit of fan rattle coming from the 780Ti. So despite the fact that both of those cards are like two, three, actually, close to four years old in the case of the latter, the fucking 1080, even though the noise was clean and just mere whooshing coming off the fans, was still fucking noisier overall and it don't make no fucking sense. Now I know what a lot of you might be thinking. You might be sitting there saying, well, Jeff, they added a third fan. So obviously that's gonna add some noise if you run them at the same speed. But here's the thing. There are only two reasons you add a third fan. One, the additional cooling capacity is required. Or number two, you want to run all three fans collectively slower and achieve the same amount of airflow. Neither of those is happening in this case. All they ended up doing was adding a third fan that did not add any additional cooling performance and added extra noise. Neither objective was achieved and it was total bullshit and completely unnecessary. And while we're on the subject of noise, listen to this. Now that fucking bullshit right there is what you hear when you set your fan speed between 1 and 29%. You might be asking yourself, well Jeff, why the fuck didn't you just use the zero fan speed option for when you're doing idle operation? Well, it, when you video edit and when you light game like I do, there's no such thing as idle operation for your graphics card. It's always doing a little bit of something and it gets it just hot enough to justify a bit of fan speed. And going from zero fan speed to 30 and back and forth and back and forth constantly during my work or during a game game is really fucking annoying. So what I like to do, what I've always done since this whole zero fan speed option became a thing, is I put a gradual curve ranging from zero at about 30 to 40 degrees, and then I will slowly creep it up to 30, coming up on 70. And then once I hit 70 degrees, I have a very natural looking fan curve that you would usually have for a graphics card under intense gaming load. So what that gives your card the power to do is ramp up speed and decrease speed as needed based on your workload. And it's not so jarringly obvious that it's distracting. It's very much like a crescendo rather than falling off or climbing up a steep cliff. But this card, of course, I'm not having any of it. And what you get is that breathing, snoring, oh, the fans kind of want to move, but they're not quite doing it sound. And it's 
fucking annoying as fuck. The very problem that I was trying to fix, it was giving to me in micro doses. And if that wasn't bad enough, the very reason I bought this card was for the two four pin PWM fan connectors included on the end of the card, allowing you to connect up to two case fans to your graphics card and tether their speed to its temperature, which is a brilliant idea. The problem is, their fucking software that controls these fans will not allow you to set it at a speed lower than 50%. Now during gaming performance this is really not that big of a deal because usually the graphics card is going to be a fair bit louder than two case fans going at 50%. But during idle operation your fucking computer sounds like a jet engine. And when I contacted Asus and said, hey Mr. Asus tech support guy, is this how it's supposed to be? You got a fix incoming? Is there any way I can rectify this and put them to a lower speed? And they're just like, nope, my engineers felt that was best. What the fuck? Last but not least, let me take you a fucking picture here. Hold on. Now I know this picture doesn't really do it justice, but does this look like fucking this? No! They're different fucking colors! See, the software only lets you choose one color for the whole fucking card, but because of the different densities and opacities of the fucking plastic overlays they put on the LEDs, they all look like different fucking colors depending on which one it is! That is not an expensive problem to solve. In fact, that was just a matter of choosing one cheap Chinese plastic over another, and you chose the wrong fucking one! In closing, yes, Mr. Asus, I understand that this is not exactly game-breaking stuff, and I would certainly forgive it if it were on a three or four or even $500 graphics card, but I paid one fucking thousand Canadian dollars for this fucking card. It is a premium, top-tier card, which at the time was the best available on the market, I expect a little bit better from you than this bullshit! Now, I have tried to forgive you for your shortcomings, Asus. I have sent back a grand total of five motherboards in this calendar year alone, and all but one of them had to be sent back at least a second time because they came back to me with brand new issues that didn't exist before. And let's not forget that EVGA was not the first company to not include active VRN cooling on one of their high-end cards because your R9, 290, and 290Xs from a few years back were total shit for the same reason. And if it seems like I'm being overly dramatic, well, it's probably because I am, but you know, I just kind of expect better from a company that's been at this for so long, especially considering the competition from Gigabyte and MSI and EVGA nipping at their heels. MSI is knocking it out of the park as far as I'm concerned, but you guys, you can't even tell the difference between fucking pink and purple. Anyhow guys, I think that's just about enough for this video, but do expect me to give you more of these kinds of reviews in the future because I am sick and tired of seeing all these fucking fluff pieces full of no information from people who spend like 15 minutes with a product and tell you to go buy it. Anyhow, follow me on Twitter at Ofa. Please subscribe to my channel if you believe in my cause and you are with me on this, and I'll see you next time.